Hey everybody, this is Kristen with Codex with another Codex review. And today I'm going to be reviewing the entire series run of I Hate Fairyland from Image Comics. Now, I Hate Fairyland was published originally in April 2016. It was written and drawn by Scotty Young, color by Jean-Francois Bulot, and lettering and design by Nate Piecos of Blambot. Apologies in advance if I have accidentally mispronounced any names. Feel free to go ahead and correct me in the comments so that I can get it right in the future. But let's get started on this one. Now, normally when I do a review, I do a review of the very first comic I read and then do a review for the whole entire series. Not doing that for this one because I'll be honest, I just read it so fast, was so caught up in it, I don't even remember what my initial thoughts were. So we're just going to go through the whole thing and there is a lot to go through. A really quick synopsis on this story. So I Hate Fairyland is a very violent comic book. There's your warning. Uh, if you can't see from my background, that is a very minor amount of violence for this comic book. But if you're okay with things like uh, Happy Tree Friends or uh, the comic series Invincible, then you'll definitely be okay with reading this one. Um, that being said, our story takes place with our young protagonist, Gertrude. She is your normal young eight-year-old little girl who lives in a fairyland in her head. I know I have done that much of my life, still do at 38. What happens is she wishes that she could go to a fairyland and that starts us on her whole entire path. She gets whisked away to a fairyland called Fairyland. There we go. But um, is put on a journey to go find a key. Now, technically this journey should only take about a day or two in human standards. That's where everything goes wrong and we fast forward 37 years. Yes, 37 years and Gertrude is still stuck in the body of an eight-year-old, but she's no longer eight years old. She has continued aging and all heck has broken loose. Take a look at my background for a moment. Heck has broken loose. Now that is a spoiler-free synopsis. As we go through this story, we are taken on this whole entire adventure, which I love. I love this type of stylized violence. Kind of a weird thing to say, but it's true. It's, it's bright. It's bubbly. It doesn't take me down a dark path. I don't have to sit there and think, is this strictly a horror comic? Am I allowed to have fun with this? Am I allowed to laugh at some of the things that are going on? Yes, you definitely can. You have my permission and you have the permission of the coloring from this. I love that so much. It continues to be this bright the whole entire way through. It doesn't change and I adore that. What I also love is if you're like me and you love fantasy movies, especially from the 80s and early 90s, this is the series for you. Although our main journey is going to be Gertrude still trying to go home, even after 37 years in the one place that she's really known her whole life, we get these little nostalgic twists and stories, including one that is based off Labyrinth. Yes, there is a version of Jareth the Goblin King here, um, a version of Alice in Wonderland, some Mad Max, even some Escape from New York. You can definitely tell that Scotty grew up with these movies, with these stories, and wanted to put his own little twist on them. And it is a lot of fun. Now, you know that I have read some of those comics that do that nostalgia. This is nostalgia done right. It is not in your face and it is not too subtle. If you know, you know. If you don't know, it's okay. You can still enjoy the story. And the other thing that I really love, um, even though those little uh, takeaways and nostalgic twists sometimes take us out of the main adventure, I remember going through the story and being really afraid that um, Scotty, the, the author, was going to go and cop out at the end. What do I mean by that? Well, we have this young protagonist at the beginning who now is suddenly aged 37 years and is trapped in the body of a child, which is terrifying in and of itself, and is still trapped in this fairyland and she can't get home. But as you keep going with the story, you start realizing, why would she want to go home? It's been 37 years. Fairyland is the only home that she has really known. Who knows what's happened on Earth or to her parents by then? Who even knows if time passes by the same way on our planet as it does in Fairyland? It most likely does not, correct? And thinking of that makes this a little scary, but also extremely sad. Um, you do sit there and start wondering, why would you want to go home? 
yeah, you've now become this very angry, rightfully so, violent person that is wreaking havoc on all of Fairyland. All of Fairyland wants you gone. They're chasing after you. All of that. I don't want to give too many spoilers because you have to read this yourself to get the full shebang out of this. But why would you still want to go home? In a weird way, with how violent this is, Gertrude still has friends there. Uh, she has sort of made her own family. She has a guide that's been with her the whole entire time. And now the rules of Fairyland are the only thing she knows. So when I say cop out, I mean, it would have been super easy just to go ahead and let her go home and somehow do a little time travel backwards thing and let her live her whole entire life without ever having to have spent 37 years in Fairyland. That would have been a happily ever after it would also have been really disappointing to the reader. Um, it does not go that way. I'm not going to tell you the ending because, again, I don't want this to be spoiler heavy, but it was the ending that I really hoped for. It's not happily ever after. It's not completely depressing. It is the exact correct ending that should have happened for a story like this, where when you think about it more and more, the more frightening and, and sort of hellish it gets. This could be somebody's own personal afterlife hell. And you sit there and you're going through it with them and it just kind of blows your mind a little bit, right? Now, downsides. There's downsides to every comic that I read, um, every movie that I see, every music that I listen to, right? There's downsides to this. And to me, the main downsides are those little nostalgic twists. Yes, I just told you guys how much I love them. And I do. There's also too many. Um, there's so many that they take you out of that main adventure and make this a little bit longer than it needed to be. Now, does it ruin anything for me? Not in the least. I really still enjoyed it. Um, I, I enjoyed the little side adventures and the side quests. And, and you know me, if you've seen my other reviews, too many plot points for me is usually a downvote. Um, sorry, downvoid, <laughs> downvote. But it's not here because these aren't different plots. They're just little side stories um, that kind of take you on a little bit more of an adventure. And then we go, boom, right back to the main adventure. Still a little bit of a down one for me, but mainly really thoroughly enjoyed this. Definitely going to be a rereader. It is another one of those where you have to look in the background of everything to make sure you catch it all. Um, I am sure that there are other nostalgic twists and, and, and Easter eggs that I did not see in here. So I really look forward to trying to see that again. And, you know, if you've read this, as always, go ahead and hit me up in the comments and let me know what you've discovered if you have read the series. If you've not read this series and you are okay with this type of stylized violence, definitely one to pick up. So where does that leave me on rating? I seem pretty happy with this, right? I know, I really am. Um, even with those little twists and turns that made it a little bit longer than it needed to be, it had a very strong beginning, even with the time jump 37 years. I mean, that was just so comic to me. And it had the most satisfying ending. It was not the happily ever after ending, and I didn't want it to be. I wanted it to be this ending, and I'm so glad it was. So that being said, this comic gets a hefty 8.5 out of 10 for me. That is kind of huge. I tend to be a little picky if you haven't noticed, but with this one, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I really want to go on the adventure again. Um, and being um, that when I was Gertrude's age of eight years old, that I found myself kind of playing that type of fantasy and wishing that the Goblin King would come and take me away right now. Okay, see, that still doesn't work. But at eight years old, I still did try it. And knowing that, whoa, that would have happened. Maybe I didn't really want the Goblin King to come and take me away right now. Maybe I didn't want to go to Fairyland. And I guess despite all the violence that's in here, I see a little bit of myself in that character. So for that 8.5 out of 10, highly, highly recommend if you haven't checked this out. Uh, really enjoyed it. Really look forward to reading it again. And as always, please hit me up in the comments if you've read this. I would love to hear other people's opinions. And that's it for I Hate Fairyland. Um, once again, in case you've forgotten, I'm Kristen with Codex. This has been a Codex review, and I hope to see you in the next issue.